Welcome Meseo Survivors! This week, Floor 77 arrived in Soart Online Integral Factor, Progressive Volume 7, Rhapsody of Crimson Heat Part 1 English Translation released, Scherzo of Deep Night Manga Adaptation Volume 3 cover revealed, a bunch of SAO figures announced for Japan and many many more. Welcome to This Week in SAO for all your weekly SAO news. First and the biggest news for us in the West, Sword Online Progressive 7 Rhapsody of Crimson Heat Part 1 English translation by Yempress has been released earlier this week. You can find it on Amazon or Book Depository, if you get links in the description, among other online book retailers, or if you're lucky, your local bookstores may have them too. I believe you can usually find them at Barnes & Noble if you have them at your local place. The book features the first half of Aincrad's Floor 7 story, as Kirito and Asuna must work with Argo to unravel the mystery at the corrupt casino where Kirito has had had some horrible horrible memories in the beta and also face the consequences of their failures with Kizmel back on floor 6 as they are no longer welcomed by the Dark Elves. If you want a little bit more of an overview, we have prepared our usual introduction video at SAO Wikia or if you're not a fan of reading, we also have an extensive summary of the book in an SAO Wikia podcast. You can find both links in the description depending on your liking. Another big news from the English side, although US specific this time around, the TV special Sword Online extra edition is now available on Hulu with the English dub. You can correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but based on a lot of reactions I have been seeing around for years now, the English dub of the special was not available on streaming platforms before, so I hope you guys enjoy it now. But keep in mind, the story presented in the extra edition is not the full story of the quest. The story continues in the Rainbow Bridge side story that is available as one of the four small but great stories featured in Sword Online Volume 22, Kiss and Fly. Once again, links in the description. Next up, we have a new release incoming in Japan. Progressive Scherzo of Deep Night Manga Adaptation Volume 3 is nearing its release date of January 27, so we have received a cover reveal for it featuring Kirito and Asuna. Yes, Scherzo is the Floor 5 story and this year's Progressive movie will be covering this floor. If you are a fan of manga, you should look forward to it, but when it comes to SAO, the warning remains the same. The source material is the light novel series and the amount of information you will get from the manga will either be limited or outright non-canon. Moving on to a short SAO game news section, as there is no licorice news this week, we usually get news once a month on that, but the mobile games, they do have the weekly news and this week they have quite little. Sword Online Unleashed Blading pulled a surprise move and released a Klein banner and your boy was obviously ready to go get it. Lucky enough I did not need to spend much as I got it on the first discounted pool, hoping to have a similar luck to at least have one Imaginarium when the rate up banner comes with another discounted pool. I never pull outside of the discounted pools because it's a waste. Aside from that, SAOUB also received its next Moon Cradle chapter that kicks off the contents of Volume 20, starting with Ronia's Nightmare of a year ago against Krieger Norlangarth and goes into the lunch scene. No animated scenes for this one. That's it for blading, so on to the integral factor news. Floor 77 has been released, it is an event sized floor, so it'll take around 25 to 30 minutes if you are reading the story, and about 3 minutes if you are skipping things, but why should you? It's a nice little story with Kirito and Shinon moments, as well as you and Koharu. Although I have some issues with the PvP oriented quest existing in SAO, you know, SAO is designed to not purposefully pit players against each other and only does so unintentionally, like people fighting over parts of the L4 campaign because some quests are instanced and another party cannot initiate a specific section as long as someone else is attempting it, so people fight to do it first, but an actual PvP event. I'm sorry, if, if Carnal is going haywire and is trying to defeat players, she can just do so. She certainly does not need a convoluted quest for the offset chance that they'll fight amongst each other to death. Pick it up, Integral Factor, your next full floor is very important, which is probably what we should have done as the first original floor above 75 floor mark in the first place. Aside from that, Integral Factor devs have finished their internal checks regarding iOS 15 and iPad OS 15 compatibility and they now deem it safe to upgrade in case you were holding off on an OS upgrade just to make sure you were able to play Integral Factor, that is. Jokes aside, 
these developer notes are generally important, so kudos for being consistent on this aspect. Disappointed about no licorice news or no significant news in general, Sword Online novels, anime and games New Year stream is approaching and the YouTube link has been posted, so you can click on set reminder and be notified when it airs on January 30th, just like how you should subscribe and hit the bell icon to not miss out on this week in SAO. I personally am not expecting much from the stream in regards to novels and anime, but I cannot completely rule out a teaser or a key visual for the upcoming Scherzo movie or a talk with Reki about his future SAO plans, although he's not yet confirmed to be at the stage, his editor Miki Kazuma is gonna be there, so he may share some info. We know Kawara's next release is Axel World, but what's next? Progressive V9 to kick off Floor 8 or the next United Ring volume that still does not seem to have reached its midway point, but even then, the meaty news will likely be about Alsatian Licorice here, as SAOAL producer Yosuke Futami teased last week. Game news? They kinda usually carry these general SAO streams. The currently confirmed guests are Matsuoka Yoshitsugu, Kirito's voice, Taketatsu Ayana, Leafa's voice, and Ayako Kono, the director of the critically well-received Ariopa Starless Night movie. As mentioned, Miki will be there for the novel news, Niva is there about anime, and I have never once seen him actually share proper news, he's always there to reflect on the anime instead. Minami, Takeuchi, and Futami are listed as game producers, but Futami shared his doubts regarding who will actually be there, so take off that what you will. But there's one more earlier event where we may hear something about the next progressive movie. Not something visual, but you know, some talks about it or something. Japanese cinema screenings for Aria are coming to an end, as if a three month long screening period was not impressive enough. A final stage greeting will be held on January 22nd with Matsuoka, Miki, Niwa and Kawahara in attendance. Speaking of cinemas, the past week saw Ariova Starless Night releases in Malaysia and Norway and Iceland got their release yesterday actually. I, I always have a double take when a movie is not released Friday. For a very long time I thought it was just an unspoken convention globally. For those of you in Brazil, your weird shenanigans, they still continue. Your February 10th listing for Aria has been once again removed last week, very similar to your initial reveal from Funimation, and currently no new ones surface, so once again you guys are in the limbo. Honestly, it feels like the officials are just trolling you at this point, stay tuned I guess. This week we have an additional figure corner, the Midsummer Sparkling Bright Yuki figurine has been colored and its sales will start in Japanese stores on January 25. It is supposed to match with an earlier Asuna figure, or at least that's what it's being advertised alongside, so if your wallet is thick, you can match them together. Elsewhere, Ariova Starless Night figures of Asuna and Mito are gonna be part of an Ichiban Kuji lottery taking place on January 29, alongside a whole lot of merch available from pillows to acrylic stands. This week in the art corner, we got more fan creations. Two adorable progressive illustrations, one for Kirito and one for Asuna by Wool on Twitter. I absolutely absolutely love the art style they have used on these, really highlighting their young age. Two striking illustrations for Asuna and Mito from Kumen Bodo on Twitter, and as you can imagine, the lighting work and its details here are the highlights, making them both look absolutely badass. A heartwarming illustration depicting a scene from the final moments of Ariova Starless Night by Shiru underscore 23, a very cute moment in both the movie and the light novel. And last but not least, an incredible shot of Asuna, Kirito and Mito rushing towards Ilfang from the Aria movie by BCNY Art. As always, links to all of these incredible creators are in the description for you to check out more of their work. Which brings us to the final portion of this week in SAO, the translation corner. This week's translation is progressive canon of the Golden Rule manga adaptation chapter 6, where Kirta and Asuna reunite with Kizmel on floor 6. Little do they know about the events that would transpire later on the floor. You can read Gishimenas' translations of the chapter as usual on the Dreadful Decoding website, link below just like everything else. That's the end of this week in SAO, thank you very much for your nice reception of this new format and the increasing interest. Don't forget to like if you enjoyed this week's episode and subscribe for more. I'll see you next week, until then, stay cool.